Welcome to the School of Wisdom, a weekly podcast produced for the Bible Bistro, studying the book of Proverbs chapter by chapter. My son, hear the instruction of your father. Forsake not the law of your mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace to your head and chains about your neck. Now, this week's lesson. Hey there, friends. Welcome back to the School of Wisdom podcast. Today, Chapter 5. If you need the outline for these studies, you can always go to my-dailydose.com. Look in the blog, and there you'll find under the uh, in the blog under the name Outline 4, and then just find the chapter that you're looking for. Today will be Chapter 5. These are PDFs, so you can download them or you can just access them right there on the website. You know, they help guide the course. You know, they, they steer the boat a little bit. So today we're looking at chapter 5, and we've got another set of three My Son lessons. So we'll begin with verse 1. My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. Okay, well, then we have the first two verses. And in the first two verses, we have a setup for the introduction to the strange woman, because the strange woman is going to be the subject guarding against her is what these three lessons all point to. And so the very first lesson, very first one out of the gate, is that we might have discretion or regard discretion, and that our lips may keep knowledge. Now, if you'll recall, the fifth condition of this book of Proverbs there in chapter 1. Again, you can find the 10 conditions of Proverbs there on the blog on at my-dailydose.com. So the, the fifth condition says, to the young man knowledge and discretion. Why is that? Why does the young man need knowledge and discretion? Well, we're going to find out because here we have the strange woman presented to us beginning in verse 3. For the lips of a strange woman drop as in honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Here we have the strange woman presented to us. Now we understand why this teacher here, our instructor, says, My son, attend unto my wisdom, bow thine ear to mine understanding that you may regard discretion and keep knowledge. So we are to attend and to bow the ear. Again, these two things go hand in hand with what we've seen before in the book of Proverbs, right? In the book of Proverbs, we've seen him say to us over and over again, attend to my words. So that means that we're to pay a special amount of attention to. This is just not look at or look over here. No, this is, you know, study this. Bow your ear to it. So we're to listen with understanding. We're to listen with intention. And we're to study with intention so that we can regard discretion and keep knowledge. Why? Because discretion will keep us from the strange woman. Now, the very first thing is, in verse 3, For the lips of a strange woman drop as in honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? So she has... She has a speech that is pleasant. It's enticing. It is winning. So this woman, her lips drop as a honeycomb. It could also be that they look good. You know, some women just have very attractive lips. And so perhaps this strange woman has lips that look sweet. And her mouth is smoother than oil. That is, her speech is that way. You go back to... um, Proverbs chapter 2. There in Proverbs chapter 2, we had the strange woman mentioned. If you go back and look at verses 16 through 19, you'll see the entire passage. One of the things that it says in Proverbs chapter 2 about the strange woman is that she is very flattering with her mouth. I think what we have here is that. We're, we're reflecting what we already read in chapter 2. Her lips drop as a honeycomb. Her mouth is smoother than oil. So she's a very smooth operator, this lady, flattering and getting her way with her words. But even though that's true, here we have the adversative, but 
Her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as the two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, and her steps take hold on hell. Again, go back to Proverbs chapter 2, and in Proverbs 2, in verses 18 and 19, I think it is, you'll find that her house sounds like a funeral parlor, because it says there you're going to find the dead. Now it tells us that her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. So death and hell are there. Her house is a place of the dead. So we need to be very careful of the strange woman. She is a flatterer, but even though she might look right and she might sound right, her end is bitter and sharp as a two-edged sword. And you know what you do with a sword. And then we have verse 6, lest. So, this last means, you know, in order that. So, you see the strange woman. She's a flatterer. But her end is bitter as wormwood. All of that said about her all the way through five. And then six, lest thou should ponder the path of life. So, her work is to keep you from considering God's way. That's, that's the idea here. Her work is to keep you from pondering the path of life. Her ways are movable, that he says, Thou canst not know them. Isn't this interesting that there's something unknowable in the Proverbs? The Proverbs is all about knowing. It's knowing the way of the Lord. It's knowing the way of the evil man. It's knowing the way of the strange woman. But here, we can't know her ways. This is amazing. So something unnormal here. You cannot know the ways of this lady. She Her ways are movable. So it's like a moving target. You can never quite get a fix on it. Well, that's the idea. So be careful. The young man needs discretion and knowledge, doesn't he? Okay, now we come to the second my son lesson, or as we noted before, this is my sons. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children. Now, children is son, but plural, sons. And it said children's a good translation. And I, I think that um, children gives the idea that, of course, we are in a larger school of wisdom here. There's more than just you and me, you know, studying this. So this is all those who come to understand the will of the Lord, to understand knowledge and wisdom. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Again, you'll notice he had in verse 1, attend to my wisdom, bow thine ear to my understanding. Now here in verse 7, depart not from the words of my mouth. So he's very specific about you know, wanting us to dig in and get all of this. Attend, bow thine ear, depart not. So we need to pay close attention. This is our lesson. So here in the second son's lesson, we have the commandments to keep us safe from the strange woman. Notice the first commandment, remove, verse 8. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house, lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel, lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. And thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. And say, How have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof? And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. So we have here the first commandment, which is remove thy way far from her and come not nigh the door of her house. If we do that, then what's said about her, the bad stuff that's said about her, and all of this from verse 9 all the way down through verse 14 that's said here about us, you know, this could happen, lest is a saying, in case you don't listen, this is what's going to happen. Lest you give your honor unto others and thy years to the cruel. Notice that in verse 9. So this is the status of the individual. Your honor goes to others, your years go to the cruel. Then the economy. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. So all that you have financially goes away, gets blown away. And then notice there in verse 11, And thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. So now the body comes into play. 
So the status of the individual in the community, the economy of the individual, and the body of the individual, and should we also declare the soul of the individual. Actually, we'll see that next time in chapter 6, how the strange woman seeks out the soul. There's a, there's a soul destruction that happens when we engage in illicit sexual uh, entertainments. So the status, the economy, the body. And then we have the, the voice of the, of the man who didn't. This is the man who didn't attend. This is the man who didn't bow the ear. This is the man who did not depart or who did depart from the words of the mouth of his, of his teacher. And listen to his words. How have I hated instruction? And my heart despised reproof, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear. Go back up to verse 1. He told us there, bow your ear. He said, I'm not inclined my ear. To them that instructed me, I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. This will be the lament of every one who goes after the strange woman. He says here in verse 8, remove thy way far from her. Don't even come near the door of her house. As a matter of fact, you're not even to get so close that you can see the doorknob. Don't even get that close. Don't get so close that you can see the doorknob. Don't go by there in curiosity and think, oh, I'll just walk by. No, obey this command. Remove your way from her. Don't even come close. Commandment number two, drink waters out of thine own cistern and running waters out of thine own well. Verses 16, 17, and 18, then kind of develop this idea of drinking waters out of your own cistern. And of course, already we understand this, right? We know we're talking about sex and sexuality. Drinking waters out of my own cistern means I'm exclusive. So there's an exclusivity here to this idea of proper biblical, the proper biblical view of sexuality. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad and rivers of water in the streets. Now, that's not a contradiction of 15. 16 really is telling us that the man who drinks waters out of his own cistern is able to share with others. A man who is healthy sexually, who follows a biblical ethic in sexuality, will be healthy spiritually, and so will be able to help others who find themselves in this condition, the condition of what we had there in 9 through 14. Let them be thine only, and not a stranger's with thee. So you see, again, we have this idea of exclusivity. Nobody else is to share in this. This is between you and your wife, or you and your husband. This is yours only. Nobody else is involved. Nobody else is invited in. Let thy fountain be blessed. So it's a choice. We have a choice, just like we have a choice in the first commandment, to remove our foot away. And if we don't, lest... All those things happen. Here, we have a choice. Drink waters out of your own cistern. If you do, instead of the negative, we have the positive. Let thy fountain be blessed. If you do this, it's a good choice because your fountain will be blessed. Now, we have the third command here in this second My Son's Lesson. Rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. All right, now here it is. You see, rejoice is the command with the wife of thy youth. And then we, if we didn't understand it was about sex up until this point, now we do. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant roe. That is, that she comforts you. And her breasts satisfy thee at all times. This is the thing that he's telling us the young man should focus on, not the breast of the stranger, but the breasts of his wife. Rejoice with her. Don't rejoice with someone else. And then we have the fourth and final command, be thou ravished always with her love. So the young man here is to, well, number one, remove his way from the stranger, drink waters out of his own cistern, and rejoice with the wife of his youth, and be ravished with her love. So he is to be consumed with, overwhelmed with, hit the love of his wife and not with the love that he can find in some strange woman's arms. So four commandments, remove, drink, rejoice, be ravished. Pretty good advice, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're a young man or an old man, it doesn't matter what kind of man you are, 
or a young woman or an old woman, you, you don't want to walk away from these commands because these will keep us from the strange woman. Third, my son lesson then, is the Lord's perspective on the strange woman. Notice verse 20. And why wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? Okay, so now he picks up on the themes that he just ended with. He said there in the third command, Rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Let her breast satisfy thee. Why would you embrace the bosom of a stranger? And then he says, Be ravished. Why do you want to be ravished with a strange woman? Well, he told us the last commandment was, Be ravished with the love of your wife, not with the love of a stranger. So, why will you, my son? Well, that's a good question. Why would you? When we know the negative and we know the positive, there's a blessing for keeping yourself exclusively to one woman. There's a blessing, you know, in drinking waters out of your own fountain and not somebody else's. There's a blessing. And you go back and look at verses 9 through 14 and, oh my goodness, you don't want any of that. So there's a blessing in obeying. Notice verse 21, For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. So the Lord's watching. That's the, that's the idea here. The Lord is watching. We have here in 21 and 20 the spiritual condition of the, of the student who's, you know, talking or thinking about engaging with the strange woman. This is the spiritual condition. The Lord's watching. He knows. He knows what you're doing. He knows what you're looking at. He knows how close you're getting to that doorknob. Walk away from it. He ponders all his goings. That is, the Lord ponders the goings of the man. All right, and then verse 22, His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself. He shall be holden with the cords of his sin. He shall die without instruction. And in the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. So here we have the Lord knows in verse 21 what you're doing. And then he tells us this is, it's not just that it's bad for you, you know, it's not just that it's bad for your status. It's not just that it's bad for your economy. It's not just that it's bad for your body. It's also bad for you spiritually, because you'll notice he says the wicked himself, his own iniquity shall take the wicked himself. So this whole idea of going into the strange woman is nothing but sin. His own iniquities shall take the wicked. He shall be holden with the cords of his sins. That sounds like addiction to me. He's holden with the cords of his sin. That's not good. He shall die without instruction. I think that this statement right here in 23 could be maybe the... I just think that the writer in Proverbs, Solomon, he cringed when he wrote this, to die without instruction, because that's what Proverbs is, Proverbs is all about, instruction. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of instruction. It's the beginning of understanding. And so to die without instruction means that you have walked away from the Word of God. You have walked away from following the Lord's path. That's horrible. That's maybe the worst thing that the writer here could say to us. This is how bad it is. And in the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. So his foolishness, his iniquity, his sin, the cords of his sin, all of that is doing something. It's causing him to go astray. It's foolishness, he says there in 23. Foolishness. His folly shall, in his folly shall he go astray. And it doesn't just say in his folly. It says in the greatness of his folly. So it's not only that it's foolish, but there's a great foolishness here. And we go astray. Astray from what? Astray from attending to the wisdom of the teacher. Astray from bowing the ear to understanding. Astray from departing not from the words of the mouth of my teacher. And if we go astray, then we're going to be the ones that say, Oh, how I have hated instruction in my heart, despised reproof, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to them that instructed me. Yeah, that'll be our language, too, if we go astray. Well, I hope you'll join me again next week as we look at Chapter 6 on the School of Wisdom podcast. 
Hey, thanks for listening to the School of Wisdom podcast. If you're listening to this over YouTube, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time one of these podcasts is uploaded. I really appreciate all my followers, and I try to respond to each and every one of your questions. Come again next week, and we'll enjoy another lesson in the School of Wisdom.